How's it going guys? Sean here and today we got a freaking awesome Yoto review. Since I know a lot of you guys can't wait to see me review a kitchen knife, huh? <laughs> Probably not, but I don't mind. I love all knives and kitchen knives are definitely uh, the Ferraris of the knife world for sure. So this right here is a Gyoto that literally translates from Japanese to cow sword, which is uh, what an awesome name, huh? Look how thin that is. Pretty cool, huh? Very, very thin knife, laser beam. Here's what's even cooler. Look at the steel. Check out that patina. It's pretty awesome, huh? Look at those colors. See that beautiful flame pattern right there? You're probably dying to know, what the heck steel is that, huh? Well, it's actually a Sanmai steel. That's Japanese for three layers. And this right here is a stainless cladding on a very, very high-end Japanese carbon steel. Take a moment to uh, guess what steel that is. All right, did you guess Aogami Super? Because if you did, you guessed correct. This is a uh, super blue steel that you've probably recognized from maybe the uh, Spyderco limited edition sprint runs that they have. And they had a uh, super blue Spyderco in the uh, FRN series of knives. So this is a super blue Gyoto. It is about 240 millimeters, which translates roughly to about an eight inch chef's knife. It has a wah handle on there with a buffalo horn uh, furl right there. Keep the wood from splitting. Very elegant piece right here. And this thing just freaking destroys the uh, foodstuffs. I mean, it's definitely a laser. When you take a uh, Gyoto, and when you make it incredibly thin like this, it's what's called a laser. <laughs> because that's exactly what it is. It's a freaking laser. So I have uh, sharpened this knife up. I believe I brought it up to a uh, 1K edge. And then I've since, uh, I believe, no, 3K. I sharpened it out to 3K. And then I did some stropping at 6 and 8K. And then I went on to my pasted strops. So this thing is definitely incredibly sharp. You probably can't see that bevel. The bevel is almost a hairline just because of how thin this uh, primary geometry is that even when you drop the angle down to about 12, 15 degrees, I mean, it just stays about a hairline. That's always a good sign that the knife is incredibly thin and ready for use in the kitchen. So it also comes with this awesome saya. And I got this knife from, uh, from John's website. Uh, Japanese knife imports. Uh, the name of the knife is the, uh, uh, forgive me, it's the Aikazushi. I, I can't really pronounce the uh, Japanese stuff very well. Aikazushi line of knives, and this is their super blue. They don't name what the hardness of the steel is. I'm sure they do, but it's in Japanese. And so, usually the max working hardness of something like super blue is going to be anywhere from like 62 to 64 HRC. And this being one of the more higher end uh, super blue steels on the market, it's definitely going to be probably in the higher hardness range. So very, very good stuff. It definitely is sharpened like a dream, and it has uh, very good edge holding. You're definitely going to get more edge holding with the uh, super blue than you are the uh, white steel number one. So cool stuff. I'll show you guys some of the uh, sharpness. Of course, nothing I show you is going to really uh, be as impressive as cutting some vegetables. But definitely a very, very, very sharp knife. Just the weight of it. Probably use a little bit of a touch up. It's not falling through like it once was with just the weight through just regular white paper. But you know what? It's definitely sharp enough for my kitchen. <laughs> I'm no pro chef or anything, all right? <laughs> Let's get that out of the way. So the Saya. The Saya doesn't actually include a pin. What's this for? This is how you would actually store your knife. And when I say store your knife, I mean like frickin' hide your knife. You, the Saya is definitely a must when you've upgraded into a uh, high class of uh, Japanese cutlery. You need to hide your knife, okay? You don't want to come home and find your wife or somebody else stabbing the freezer to get the, the ice out of the freezer or, you know, sitting there chopping like this on the cutting board, you know, <laughs> all kinds of stuff. And rather than look like a snob and try to educate people to not do that with your really fancy knife, I'd rather just hide it all together. So I put it in the saya and I stow it away somewhere so that when I'm ready to cook, I can pull it out. I've got other knives for other people to use uh, in my place. 
but the high-end stuff, you definitely need to get the Saya, and you definitely need to stash it away. Unless they're also in the Japanese uh, kitchen cutlery, it's just no use in trying to uh, educate them, because it's just, <laughs> it would just fall on deaf ears. They'd be like, oh, I know how to use a knife, dude. You don't need to tell me that. God, what a snob. Give me that thing. <laughs> but yeah, when you're using something like this uh, food laser, definitely uh, it's kind of more like the blade leaves the cutting board as you cut. You're making kind of these push cuts like this. And you just really enjoy the sharpness of it. Not so much uh, the excessive kind of western style chopping or the rock cutting like that. It's more cutting like this. Okay, you start with this belly area right here and you come down. That's enough of that. But the balance of this knife is fairly uh, forward heavy. It's really meant to be used in that pinch grip with your uh, palm kind of being supported by the uh, wah handle. It's good stuff though for sure. You see I'm definitely a fan of this knife. It was actually a gift to me from a really good friend. And you want to know how you could be a really good friend? You buy your friend who's obsessed with knives a freaking knife. And so definitely an excellent gift. We'll probably have to geek out in more detail about some Japanese kitchen knives because they are definitely my absolute favorite. If you want to talk about what the Formula One race car of the knife world is, it definitely has to be a kitchen knife. Kitchen knives are made for pure cutting. They still have high relevance uh, in the knife world. They're still being used every day. Every kitchen uh, should have a kitchen knife. And so these are things that still haven't lost their relevance versus not everybody needs an outdoor knife. Not everybody needs or carries a pocket knife, but you can bet that everybody has a kitchen knife unless, unless they're like five million pounds and they eat like fast food every day. <laughs> All right, guys, so just a quick look at this awesome Super Blue Kyoto. Thanks for watching. Take care.